What is up guys, it is Bucky and welcome to your 18th intermediate Java tutorial. And in this tutorial, as promised, we're going to be learning how to create our first generic method. Now as you can see if you are watching the last tutorial, I went ahead and got rid of all those overloaded methods because, uh, well that's the point of this tutorial, to get rid of all of the overloaded methods, so that's what we did. And it, as a reminder, if you have a bunch of overloaded methods that are identical, not only in this example, but any code you're doing, this is what you can do make a generic method to pretty much compact all of your code and replace it with one method that does it all so let's go ahead and learn how to do that let's go ahead and add a little comment be generic method and alright we're good to go so let's go ahead and put and make sure you're outside of your main of course but public static and the first thing that we need to do is put something called a type parameter now what you need to do is put it in angle brackets and just go ahead and put T because that's just a common convention and now instead of like integer data or character data it's going to view this data as a generic form of data called T and you don't have to put T um, but it's just by a convention that's what people always do like a uh, kind of like camel casing this is just what uh, is the most common thing in the program world so let's go ahead and put that and of course put your return type avoid oh, and that's another thing make sure you always have it before your return type um, if you don't have this then it's going to first of all cause a syntax error and your compiler won't understand later on when it's looking at this generic code what the heck it is so that's why you need it right there so put void and of course name it print me and what this print me is going to do is first of all it's going to take a parameter which is a t array and it's going to treat the uh, treat it as X so right now don't forget to have your type parameter and also the generic array called T that you're going to pass it in and now from here let's just go ahead and make the code the exact same as before so let's go ahead and make an enhanced for loop and before we had two different things like integer right here or a character well now that we have that type parameter T which is pretty much means generic data we can go ahead and put T here so any array any type of array it's going to be able to use it so let's just go ahead and make a variable called B because my name is Bucky and go ahead and X because X is the array that we passed in and from here we can go ahead and put system out printf and as our two arguments for our printf let's go ahead and put S percent s space and also that b that we used in our enhanced for loop now from here let's just go ahead and print out a blank line as always print line right there and let's see let's first of all make sure it runs all right and as you can see instead of having to build a whole bunch of different overload and methods we can just pass it this one generic method and pass any type of data we want into it and it works just fine so here we pass it an integer array and here we pass it a character array, array and as you can see instead of having a specific type of data we just put a generic letter which was T so here's how it works these statements right here print me with the integer array at first whenever you call this method it first attempts to locate the method that takes an integer array as a parameter if it says alright I cannot find a method that takes an integer array is my parameter so I guess after now I'm gonna look for a method that takes generic data as its parameter says so says alright first I wanna find the method that's most specific to me if I can't find that then I'm gonna take a method that just accepts everything and if I can't find that of course you get an error so a gen if you have an overload method and then a generic method it's going to call that overload and method specific to the type of data first and generic method is of course just what I showed you so that's the point of a generic method and that's the power of it pretty much being able to take any type of data and doing the same thing no matter what the type of data is and as you can see instead of like 18 different types of data it's just one condensed method so that's all for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to be going over probably some more generic methods and eventually generic classes. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.